Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Chaos Nation, and today, oh, we finally, or fi today is finally the day, okay? Mewtwo and Giovanni are finally in the game. Now, if you haven't logged into the game yet already, okay, starting from today onwards for the rest of the event, uh, the first time you log in, you'll be greeted with a special cinematic trailer video thingy uh showcasing the you know giovanni and mewtwo being introduced in the game okay now they're doing things a lot differently than what i was expecting i was expecting mewtwo just come out as a sync pair that we can pull for and he's just in the game that's what i was expecting that's kind of like how you know kind of like similar to how they've been doing with the uh the other pokemon releases but that's not how they're doing it and it if anything it looks like they're taking some pages out of uh, Dragalia Lost book, okay? Because they're doing things very similar to how Dragalia Lost does in terms of how they're doing the event. And in some ways, I really like the way uh, that it's implemented right now. And then on other ways, I also kind of don't like uh, how it's implemented too. Because there's so like there's pros and cons. So no matter how they do things, there's going to be pros and cons to it. If they do as a sync pair, there'll be pros and cons. If they do it the way it is right now, there'll be pros and cons. So I'll get into that. I'll go over the event, uh, my thoughts on it. I'll go over Mewtwo and his stats. I finally got him as well. I was waiting until I actually acquired him today. Uh, so I, I basically spent almost the entire day just grinding for him. Okay, so that way I can make this video. Uh, I'll show what he does, his stats and everything, my thoughts about him as well, um, and you know, all that good stuff. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Okay, so uh, I guess we'll we'll show off Mewtwo first real quick before I go over his events and how, how, how the event works and stuff. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead, level up. Uh, oh wait, no, I think I have a max up. Let's do moves and skills. Actually, no, we'll go to the decks because that's how you see his max stats and stuff. All right, so this is Mewtwo and Giovanni. We'll go ahead and take a look at the max level. All right, he's a psychic Pokemon, obviously, at least in the game. He's a psychic Pokemon. He's a five star Pokemon uh, at level 120. He, well, he's a strike Pokemon, first of all, that's his role. He is weak to dark moves. Uh, at level 120, he has an HP of 488. An attack of 359, a defense of 96, special attack at 440, special defense at 96, and speed at 390. He has four moves, okay? Three of them are attack moves. He only has one trainer move. His first move is Confusion. He uses one gauge bar. Is a special attack. 21 power, 100 accuracy. Hits one opponent. Has a very small chance of leaving the target confused. And is a psychic move. He has the move Psychic, which is a psychic move. <laughs> Uses three gauges, is a special attack move, has 118 power, 100 accuracy, it's one opponent, and has a very small chance of lowering the target's special defense. We have the move Shadow Ball, which uses three gauges, is a ghost type attack, is a special attack move, uh, 118 power, 100 accuracy, it's one opponent has a small chance of lowering the target's special defense. Basically, it's exactly the same as Psychic, it's just a shadow. I mean, it's just a ghost uh, attack instead of a Psychic attack. No difference. And then his trainer move is called Nowhere to Hide, all right? If it only affects the self. Raises the user's evasiveness, sharply raises the user's critical hit rate. And you can use it twice. Um, the Sync Pair attack is called World Domination uh, Psy Strike. It's a psychic attack move. A special attack has 300 power. Uh, has one opponent and doesn't have any additional effects. Okay. His passive abilities is power reserves two, which powers up moves in a pinch. So in terms of how good Mewtwo actually is, um, there's really only one thing to really say about Mewtwo. Or I guess like a couple of things, but really one overall thing to say about him, which is the fact that he is a glass cannon. He is a hardcore glass cannon, okay? I went ahead and already compiled a full spreadsheet of all of the Pokemon's uh, stats in the game, okay? So that way I can make some videos coming out soon talking about who are like, you know, the best damage Pokemon, the best support Pokemon, uh, all that good stuff, okay? Uh, and based on my little spreadsheet, Mewtwo 
not including mega evolutions, okay? Not including mega evolutions. So like mega uh, Pidgeot, for example, or mega, mega Houndoom. Um, just in their natural state, Mewtwo has the highest special attack stat in the game, okay? Followed by, let me pull it back up. I believe it was, uh, let's see. Followed by Sceptile, okay? No, that's incorrect. Uh, followed by Pidgeot. Pidgeot has the second highest uh, special attack stat in the game. Natural special attack stat in the game, I should, I should clarify. All right, now if we were to include Mega Evolution, so when you do use your Sync uh, move attack, okay, uh, Pidgeot has the highest special attack stat, and then, and then Mewtwo becomes the highest, okay? So regardless of how you look at it, Mewtwo is basically one of the best, if not the best, special attack uh, Pokemon in the game in terms of damage, okay? Um, however, like I mentioned before, he is a glass cannon because of the fact his attack is so goddamn high, his defense is also so goddamn low. <laughs> so he's very likely to get one shot in high, uh, high difficulty stages very easily, okay? Which can be kind of tricky to utilize it and like you'd have to be kind of lucky to not get hit if you want to fully utilize his damage or maybe if you're working with some friends or something you have a different pokemon on your team one of you is using a different pokemon that can actually use a move to force the enemy to focus on your teammate instead of on the two okay so it, he has pros and cons which is kind of the whole point of what being a glass cannon is okay high damage low defense so he can deal high damage but you can also take high damage so he's a double-edged sword okay um, so in that regards, truthfully, I would just kind of stick it to some of the other, uh, five-star Pokemon in the game that have high damage sets, kind of like Pidgeot, Houndoom, um, Sceptile and stuff like that, that have high damage, but also still have at least over 100 <laughs> defenses. So that way they can actually take a few hits before they die. Whereas Mewtwo more is more likely to just die in a hit or two, uh, in high level, uh stages i mean he'll still be like one of the best nukers in the game for like most content uh but for high level uh quests he's probably not going to be the best pick um overall though the fact that both psychic and shadow ball cost three gauges is kind of also iffy and confusion has such a low power stat compared to psychic and shadow ball it's like uh... It's like confusion. You're only going to use confusion as like a last resort move. Like if like you need to spam moves, you're like, all right, I'll just keep using confusion. Um, the high power output of Psychic and Shadow Ball though is really good. I do appreciate that. It's also really nice that Mewtwo actually has two separate types of attack moves instead of just pure Psychic moves. So that adds a little bit of versatility to him, especially if you don't have uh, like Gengar, for example, because there's not a whole lot of uh, ghost Pokemon in the game as of right now. So to have a very high damaging ghost attack move in the form of Mewtwo can actually be pretty clutch in some stages. Uh, the main thing that I would like to note, though, aside from the fact that he's a glass cannon, is the fact that he doesn't have a single move in his pool, in his utility, in his kit, I should say, that's the word, in his kit that actually buffs himself, okay? That's very key because of the fact that other five-star uh, strike Pokemon, such as Pidgeot, for example, have at least one type of trainer move that let them buff themselves to let them do even more uh, damage overall. So Pidgeot has X, uh, X special attack, for example, raises his special attack. If we take a look at Sceptile, Sceptile is one of Arguably one of the most versatile and best uh, damage Pokemon in the game just because of the fact of no turning back. No turning back can literally immediately raise all of your uh, attack buffs to max in just one usage. Okay, which is... There's like no other Pokemon in the game that can really do that as of right now. Okay, there's some that can come close to that, but not to the degree that Sceptile does. So that's definitely worth mentioning. Okay. Um, so this is what I kind of mean though, by like, 
even though Mewtwo might have that like natural, might have the most uh, highest natural special attack set in the game. At the same time, also because he's a glass cannon, he has low defense and he can't actually buff himself. He would have to rely on a different Pokemon to actually buff him instead. He could actually be doing just as much damage as say your Sceptile or your Pidgeot, or if not a little bit less, depending on your team setup as well. Um, in a co-op uh, situation, because of the fact that most of the time, unless you're playing with friends, if you're just playing with a bunch of strangers, it's a lot more difficult to rely on your teammates. Um, you can't really rely on it nearly as much in that case. Uh, in which case, Mewtwo is going to be very difficult to run in a lot of situations. In which case, running just a lot of the best damage Pokemon in the game, as of like currently in the game, like Sceptile and Pidgeot, is still going to be your best bet. Just because of the fact that at, at the very least, they can still buff themselves. They don't have to rely on their teammates to buff them for them. Um, like in Mewtwo's case. So, Mewtwo is a very good Pokemon. It's just very difficult to use in the uh most end game situations that you could say in the heart in the highest difficulty stages that's the best way to put it, to use it now enough about him let's go ahead and go over the actual event itself what it does and stuff uh i'll talk about like the pros and cons and everything so if you go to explore so after you watch the little cinematic when you first open the game for the first time today you'll go to events okay and you'll notice it'll just say Lurking Shadow Legendary Event. It even says, you know, up like on this screen, it says Legendary Event go ongoing, okay? Click that, click this as well, okay? You can play through all the little story missions and, all, and read all of it. It's kind of interesting, but I, for me, all I wanted was the actual unit, the actual sync pair itself, so I just spam through it. Um, you get a bunch of free gems, okay? However, the main the main grind for this event is going to be in the co-op scene because this is where you get a majority of the items needed to actually attain Mewtwo. So if you see at the top of the screen where it says Lurking Shadow shows Mewtwo and there's like a little yellow bar, you have to collect 800 copies of the uh, of the yellow uh, ticket thing. I don't, know, I don't know what they're called. The yellow ticket thing when from doing the co-op quest in order to actually obtain Mewtwo okay now you technically can obtain the yellow tickets from doing these single player quests too but they are significantly lower amounts okay like I'm talking about you get like maybe five at best okay like that's that's if you're lucky like most of the time you maybe get like two or three which is horrendously low you have to do the co-op in order to get the majority of them like if I do the very hard uh, quest I'll get about like maybe like 20 in a single round okay which is significantly higher it does take a little bit longer of course um, but it's significantly higher and honestly I just spent most of the day just letting it play on autopilot uh, on the very hard difficulty while I'm playing like Magic the Gathering and Overwatch and stuff like that as and just letting it grind in the like on autopilot in the background that's what I've been doing all day um, I can't do the very the super hard quest just yet because of the fact that as far as I can tell you have to have the the latest uh, sync pair unit in the game Leopard in order to actually beat the super hard uh, quest so if we go to sync pair scout you have to have this Pokemon this sync pair uh, Grimsley and Leopard in order to actually defeat the high the super hard difficulty or the co-op event just because of the fact that in the super hard difficulty um, or I should say you have to have Leopard and Houndoom um, because of the fact that and I'll go into let me go back to that screen okay just because of the fact that when you go and you play this this round okay Mewtwo does or I should say all three of the enemy Pokemon do a horrendously huge amount of damage to you, okay? And on almost, and on the super hard and the very hard stages, they will immediately max buff out their uh, their attack buffs, okay? In which case you have to have the Leo part on your team, whether it be yourself or a, uh, a teammate who has Leopard, you have to have a Leopard on your team so that way they can use, what was it, Snatch or something? They, so that way they can use that one move that completely uh, erases enemy buffs that they receive, okay? 
And I remember mentioning this when the actual Leopard uh, unit came out. I stated that it wasn't exactly needed at that second, but I would very easily see it possible where they're going to come out with a very difficult quest where you are going to need Leopard in order to deal with a situation like that. And lo and behold, Mewtwo comes out and now you need Leopard because that exact situation happens. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Uh, let me just quickly go like snatch this this is the move okay you have to be able to use snatch on the enemy pokemon to get rid of their buffs so that so that way they don't one shot you immediately um this is kind of the biggest drawback at the moment and, and like right now i can't do the super hard quest just because i don't have leopard um and you also have to have your pokemon at level 120 in order to even remotely uh survive and tank through the enemy's damage as well okay so Again, even like another roadblock in the way too. I don't have level 120 Pokemon yet. I only have level 100 Pokemon. Um, and yeah, that's what Snatch says, by the way, in case you didn't read it. It says returns the target's raise stats to normal and raises the user's stats by that amount. So you basically steal their buffs, okay? This is absolutely critical. You're going to need to have Leopard in order to play against that quest, okay? Um, and the reason why I mentioned Houndoom, that you're going to need Houndoom for that quest too, is because of the fact that Houndoom is currently the best uh, special attack or debuffer in the game as well. Okay, so if I just go ahead, we'll go editing. Okay, if I just go ahead and take a look at Houndoom, because of his Snarl ability, okay, it hits all of opponents in AoE move and it lowers the target's special attack by one tier. Okay, so this is going to be the move that you're going to be using in order to do super effective damage against them because all of the Pokemon on the enemy team are weak to dark moves. And on top of the fact that they all use special attack abilities, okay, including Mewtwo. So being able to lower their special attack stat on top of having a Leopard on your team to actually steal the buffs, okay, so that way they can actually have negative special attack stats, okay, that's how you're going to be able to survive through the enemy team and also be able to deal. A uh, huge amount of damage to the enemy team as well. Okay, this is basically going to be one of the only ways to actually play in the super hard uh, difficulty quest as of right now. Okay, so just throwing that out there. I basically called it already with Leopard when when the unit came out, and you, you need Leopard now uh, if you want that. But at the very least, you don't need to do the super hard quest in order to get through the event. Okay. The event did just come out today, and I already have Mewtwo. Granted, I spent the, almost the entire day grinding for Mewtwo, <laughs> so that's worth noting. Um, but one of the biggest hassles that I think people are going to have about this event is just how grindy it is. Um, personally, for me, I don't mind the fact that it's grindy if it was at least in the single player event where I could grind. Uh, so that way I don't have to rely on connectivity issues and whatnot. Because of the fact that it is all pretty much mainly focused on the co-op area in order to get the majority of the items you need in order to level up Mewtwo and stuff like that, that's where I have the biggest problems with it. And that's where it comes into the pros and cons between being an event and being a sync pair that you can just pull on a regular pull. Okay. Um, so in case you don't know what I'm talking about, let me just quickly go over it. So you know those tickets that we have to collect in order to even unlock Mewtwo in the first place, okay, to even like get him as part of our team? Um, those same tickets are now used, uh, you can now exchange in the shop, okay, in the exchange item section of the shop. You can actually exchange those tickets now to get all of the items you need to basically level up Mewtwo. Okay, and this is going to be the biggest hurdle, per, to be honest, just because of the fact of how uh, how much extra grinding you're going to need to actually completely max things out. So, like, for example, uh, in order to actually level up Mewtwo, so if we go to level up, oh, not level up, uh, raise his level cap. There we go. Okay, in order to raise his level cap, if you look at the bottom left, okay, he has to have his own specific super training machines for like Mewtwo that you obtain from the event in order to actually let him level up. And the same is also true for unlocking his uh, move skills as well. So if we go to moves and skills to this, I have to have, well in this case, I just need a normal training machine uh, for that. But 
even this one, I had to have another bronze uh, Mewtwo specific training machine to be able to unlock this move as well, okay? Same thing with Shadow Ball. I still need Mewtwo specific training machines in order to unlock those moves. Okay, same thing with all the other moves. Um, so you have to grind the event even more just to unlock the moves. On top of the fact, because of the fact that Mewtwo is not a sync pair that you can pull for, that also means that you can't just, like, for the entirety of the game's lifespan, you can't just, you know, uh, slowly level up his uh, max potential, for example, his, you know, the increased potential portion. You can't just, like, over time max it out with uh, what you're getting given through, through pulls. Because of the fact that this is a limited time event, as far as I'm aware, okay, that also means that you have a limited amount of time to actually completely max out your Mewtwo. Otherwise, you, you're like, you're not going to be able to love, level up your Mewtwo any further once the event ends. Okay, so that's the biggest drawback in my opinion. Um, and that's kind of the the flip. That's that's the con. Okay, that's kind of like the pro from pulls. If you if Mewtwo was a sync pair, at the very least, you could eventually, hopefully, if you play the game long enough, hopefully be able to max out your Mewtwo. Uh, and you can also use normal training machines and, and materials and stuff to, you know, fully max out his level cap at least. Maybe not his increased potential. Actually, that too, because you could, sooner or later you would get enough uh, uh, five star. Uh, power-ups as well in order to increase his potential as well so that's this is the flip side but because he's you have to get all of his materials from the event you have to grind a whole lot okay it took me an entire day just to get Mewtwo okay that was basically non-stop while I'm doing other stuff on the side um, just letting the game plan autopilot uh, for anybody who doesn't have that amount of time, I can only imagine how much longer it might take you guys in order to do that instead. Uh, and it's going to take me even longer. I would, will I'm willing to bet maybe even like another two to three days worth of non-stop grinding just in order to fully get all of the items needed in order to completely max out my Mewtwo. So that's how you get Mewtwo. That's how the event works. That's how you get all the items needed in order to max out your Mewtwo. Okay, we showed how Mewtwo is. I gave my thoughts about Mewtwo. Uh, I, I think that's it. I think I pretty much went over everything. So just a quick recap in case you, you forgot. Mewtwo, he's a very good Pokemon. He has the highest special attack natural stat in the game, not counting Mega Pokemon, but even amongst the Mega Evolutions, he still has one of the highest in the game. But he is a glass cannon, okay? He's probably not gonna be nearly as good in high difficulty stages just because of how easy he's going to be one shot, at least not without any other Pokemon's uh, support to back him up, okay? But other than that, that's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. It's the best way to know when I upload more videos such as this one. Uh, go ahead and let me know what your comments and opinions are, thoughts and opinions are in the comment section down below. My name is Brian, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.